What's up guys, Elijah Porter here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a gorgeous day here in South Florida. It's hot, it's windy, but I'd much rather be hot than cold like it is in some parts of the country. Today we're gonna be reviewing my 2019 Ducati Scrambler Desert Sled, but we gotta do something first. First, we gotta get this giant pool off my patio so I can bring in the bike. The pool's been great for lounging in since my neighborhood pool's been closed, but I need room to review the bike. The pool needs to be clean, so let's get it off the patio bring in the beast and review it. I hope you stick around. So now that I actually have room here on the porch, let's get into the review of the bike. But before we do that, I want to give a little brief history lesson of Ducati and the Scrambler. Bear with me, it's not going to be that long and it hopefully won't be that boring. Ducati originally released the Scrambler in 1962 and compared to bikes of today, it was probably nothing to behold. But it was innovative. Scramblers were bikes for people to make not for manufacturers to make, but Ducati kind of changed the game with that. They actually manufactured a scrambler. It's kind of like supermotos were a couple years ago. Manufacturers weren't really putting them out. People were just turning their dirt bikes into supermotos. Now you have, you know, the DRZ, you have the Yamaha 250, you have all of those supermotos that manufacturers now make, but back then it was a little different for a manufacturer to do that. Ducati reintroduced the Scrambler in 2015 with seven models and most people, especially Ducati fans, would say they were just an exercise in styling, a marketing gimmick, but I don't really agree with that, for the most part anyway, not with the Desert Sled. But the Desert Sled wasn't included in that 2015 lineup. The Desert Sled wasn't introduced until 2017 and since then it's had some changes, but most of those changes would be aesthetic. The Desert Sled is one of the only bikes that I really consider not so much an exercise in styling and might actually have a little bit of functionality to it. So let's get into the functionality of the Desert Sled a little bit and let's start with the engine. The engine is the same in most of the Scrambler lineup. There's an exception. There's a bigger 1100 engine. This engine is a 803cc L-twin four-stroke air-cooled engine that is shared by the Icon, the Cafe Racer, and the majority of the rest of the Scrambler lineup. This engine is not particularly fast, top speed's about 120 miles per hour, which comes out of its 70 horsepower, and the engine is really torquey. Now, the torque is a little bit more important to me than the top speed, and the first gear of the bike is really short. I think this makes it more fun around town. No one's trying to take their desert sled to that 120 mile an hour top speed. I may have personally been 100 miles an hour on this bike, and it is not comfortable at all. There's absolutely no wind protection up front. There's no windshield. There's hardly even handlebars in the way. And you sit really straight up. So all of that wind is just coming right into your chest. So it's not comfortable at top speed. Really at about 
65 miles an hour, this bike becomes pretty uncomfortable. But hey, it's fun to ride and I'm not hardly ever gonna take it 70 miles an hour. It's mostly for use around town. And around town is where that torque and that short first gear really come in handy. It's very zippy through traffic and I think it's got a great riding position. I can see above cars and I'm not really someone who likes to ride motorcycles for the danger. I ride it because it's fun for me. And for me, being straight up in that really tall riding position where I can see over cars is a really comforting thing for me. And I think for beginner riders, that's a big deal. But as far as rideability of the bike, I think it's a really good beginner bike. You're really straight up, the engine's not too powerful, it's very comfortable, and that makes it a really awesome bike for beginners. The part that makes it not so great is the price. But I don't want to talk about pricing yet. I want to talk more about the functionality of the Scrambler and specifically the Desert Sled. My wife and I love to ride together, but she's somebody who is a little bit nervous about riding and she's gotten a lot better over time. But I understand her concerns and if you've ever ridden on the back of a bike, not the one controlling it, sitting on the back is not very comfortable for most bikes. I think the Desert Sled and the Scrambler lineup as a whole has a great two-up experience specifically because of this seat. Now you're going to get a skinnier portion for the person controlling the bike but the person on the back of the bike has a very big seat and it's got this rake that holds them on so they don't feel like they're going to fall off the back every time you start to go from a stoplight. There's also built-in handles back here that are functional but they don't compromise the styling of the bike. Besides like Harleys and Cruisers, the person on the back usually gets left out in the comfort department as far as new bikes. I mean, have you ever seen a guy riding with his girlfriend on the back of his, you know, Jixxer? They don't ever look too comfortable. I don't feel like people feel the same way when they see me and my wife riding around on the Scrambler. And I think she would agree with me that it is pretty comfortable experience. Another great thing for riding two up, specifically about the Desert Sled, is it's got long suspension travel. My wife and I can ride on this bike comfortably without me feeling like we're bottoming out the suspension and I don't even feel like it's having to work that hard to keep us comfortable. The Desert Sled has extra suspension travel obviously over the regular Scrambler lineup and I think it's really great for riding the bike too up. It's one of the biggest reasons that I got this Scrambler over the Icon or one of the other models. When I bought this bike, I highly consider getting the Cafe Racer. I think that bike looks awesome, especially with the new paint scheme with the blue and silver. If you haven't seen one, you should check out the Cafe Racer. It's a really awesome bike. But one of the main reasons I got this was specifically for riding to people all the time. And that riding position that I mentioned earlier. So let's go back to that exercise and styling point. Is the Desert Sled just to exercise and styling? Obviously, it's more of an urban attack motorcycle than it is off-road, but I do think that this bike could be used well off-road. I've never personally taken mine off more than just a dirt path, but I think it would handle it pretty well. The tires were designed specifically by Pirelli for this motorcycle, and I think they're a great mix of comfortable on the road and functional in the dirt. You can see here that these grooves on the back tire are very deep and can really dig in well. One of this bike's biggest problems off-road, I think, would be the weight. This bike's pretty heavy, a little over 400 pounds, and that makes it hard to control. That combined with a really high seat height can make it difficult, especially for a shorter rider, to control it off-road. Now, I'm a little over 6 feet tall, between 6 feet and 6'1", and I can almost flat foot this bike. I don't want to give myself too much credit. I can almost flat foot it. When my wife's on the back, I can easily flat foot the bike. But if you're a rider that's about, you know, less than six feet, you're going to be on your toes or you're going to be one leg over. That can be a little problematic if you take this bike off road and you start to tip. Because given how heavy the bike is, if you start to tip and you got to lean over a pretty good bit to even be able to catch the bike, you can easily find yourself falling over. And you don't really want to drop a $15,000 motorcycle in a trail somewhere on a tree. Let's talk about something I really don't like about the Scrambler and that's the gas tank. It's pretty standard about three gallons and I think I've gotten about 40 miles to the gallon. Hopefully that'll go up from here as the bike gets more broken in but I do have about 800 miles on the bike now and I haven't really noticed that fuel economy going up. That means that I only get about 120 miles of range and that's if I ride really economically, which who wants to do that all the time? So 
with that fuel, most people say 120 miles, I live in South Florida, there's a gas station every corner. That's true. But there's one aspect of my life that I wish this was better for. Every year, my wife's family vacations across the state on the other side in Fort Myers. I live in Fort Lauderdale and that's not a huge trip, it's only a couple hours. But next year, I wanna take this bike over there to ride around while the weather is amazing. And I don't think I'll be able to. 120 miles is not enough to get me across the state. And the middle of this state specifically is Highway 75 and there are no gas stations on Highway 75. So what am I gonna do with that short of a gas tank? I don't really know. And maybe that's a problem for more bikes than I realized. But I would compromise a little bit of the top speed and a little bit of the weight to have a little bit bigger gas tank, maybe closer to four gallons. All right, so now I'm taking you actually onto the bike and I wanna do that to show you the gauge cluster. I really like the gauge cluster on this bike. I think it looks really cool and it's pretty functional for what it is. You can see here we have the top speed, the miles per hour. We have the odometer, something that tells us if the kickstand is down or not. We have indicators for the lights, indicators for the turn signals come up on the screen. You can see right now my fuel light is on, ABS, oil, all that stuff. Let's talk about the functional stuff. So we have a clock down at the bottom. We have our trip odometers here, trip one. We have our total odometer. Go into the settings, we have the temperature. We have the range, I need to get gas soon. So I really enjoy the gauge cluster, it's really easy to see. Here we have all of our controls, the kill switch, brights, starter. And over here we have our high beams, we have the menu, this is how you switch through everything on the gauge cluster. We have the turn signals and we have the horn as well. For me, I think this bike looks awesome. There's a couple of changes that need to be made. Number one, these need to go. It looks like the bike has rabbit ears, but they are super functional mirrors. But I probably will be taking them off and installing some bar end mirrors or maybe no mirrors at all. Another thing that needs to go, the tail of the bike. This is incredibly ugly, but it's nothing the manufacturer can do. It's all about regulation. I've already ordered a fender eliminator and when it gets here I'll do a video installing it as well. Here we can see the single rear shock and it looks pretty awesome. I love the yellow in contrast with the red and the white but I think it would also be cool in other colors and eventually I might change it to a blue or something like that but I haven't really decided that yet. We see right here the foot pegs they have this really awesome rubber piece on them that can be taken off so if you are riding off-road you can get more grip this way but this little rubber piece does an awesome job that uh, controlling the vibrations that you feel when riding and they're really great for riding on the road. One other complaint I have about the bike is how far down the brake lever is from the pedal. The brake lever is pretty far down from where your foot is. You have to reach down quite a lot to be able to hit that brake pedal and if you're not used to it, it can be kind of dangerous when you start out if you're not realizing how far away the brake lever is from where your foot is you have to really push down on that so why am I making this video why worry about a bike that's a year old now and most people aren't even interested in buying here's why and when I was looking at it especially for the difference between the 2019 and the 2018 there were hardly any videos about the 2019 a lot of them were people riding it or people a dealership giving a walkthrough of it but no real consumer information about the bike and that's what I wanted. Honestly, before I was looking for this, in North America, there were only like seven videos reviewing the bike and that includes those walkthroughs and stuff. There weren't very many. So as a consumer looking to purchase this bike, do I think it's a good purchase? Yes or no? And here's some of the stuff I wish people would have told me. Number one, if you're looking for a used bike, the 2018 or 2017 Desert Sled, those are excellent bikes. But there are some things to consider when thinking about, do I want a brand new one versus that? You're going to save a little bit of money because it's used or a leftover model year. Obviously, you're going to save some, but you're not going to get a hydraulic clutch. And that does make it a lot easier to operate the clutch on this bike. I've ridden both and the clutch is much more comfortable on this bike compared to the old ones. You don't get a fuel gauge. Guys, we're spending over 10 grand on a bike and you don't get a fuel cage on the old ones. That's pretty ridiculous. Another great feature of the new one is a gear indicator. There's no gear indicator on the old bikes and a gear indicator, especially for a new rider, is a really big deal. 
So I really recommend getting the new one over the old one unless you can get a really good deal on the old one because at the end of the day, you're really not gonna save that much and what I've seen, you're not gonna find a lot of these on the used market. You're mostly gonna find leftovers from a dealer and dealers still have all the same fees mostly and you're still gonna pay a lot for a leftover model year. If you can spring it, I highly recommend spending the extra couple grand on this. I think it'll be worth it for you. Now going back to there not being many on the used market, I think that says a lot about the bike. If they're not on the used market, that means people are generally happy with it. And I think that's great. So let's get into a little bit of the real consumer info as far as like financials go. So this bike generally retails for about $11.5 or $11.995 depending on where you live and all that stuff. After dealer fees, you're going to be paying about $13.5 out the door. Maybe even a little bit more, maybe a little less, but around $13,500. So as far as financials go, for the performance of this bike and that kind of stuff, you can definitely get something better. You can get a DRZ, for instance. You can get a Yamaha WR250 or a, a 450 even that's been converted. So for the value, no, this bike is not a good value. But I really wanted a Ducati, and I loved this bike ever since I first saw it. I really wanted one. So for me, having that Ducati name and having a Scrambler Desert Sled, that was worth it to me. You might not all feel the same way, and that's completely understandable. There are three really options to buying this bike. Number one, you could be flush with cash and go buy it right out. You could finance it traditionally, or you can lease it, and that's what I did. With the Ducati Premier financing, though, I want you to go into the dealership with a little bit of pessimism before you sign the papers. So when online at my Ducati dealership in Pompano Beach, this bike was listed with $150 payment a month under Ducati's premier financing program at 0.99% interest rate for four years with a buyout at the end. Blah, blah, blah. But you're really not going to get that 0.99% interest rate unless maybe you have a perfect credit score. My credit score is around 760 and even I didn't get it. My interest rate is almost 2% on the bike, which makes my payment not $150 a month, but $194 a month, which is a pretty substantial jump. That's almost what I pay for my car payment. So at the end of the day, here's the basics of it. I spend $194 a month on this bike that I absolutely love and I'll be locked into that for the next four years. After the end of that four years, I'm gonna have to pay six grand to finish paying off the bike if I want to, or I can trade the bike in and they'll give me $6,000 for credit in a new bike. So it's worth it to me, but that might not be worth it to you, especially when you could probably go find a used Supermoto on a used market or something like that for a lot cheaper. And I completely understand that. But if you really want the Ducati name or you really want to scramble, you really want a brand new bike and you just love the way this bike looks, I highly recommend getting one. Like I said at the beginning, this is a slightly biased review and that's because I'm a huge Ducati fan. I love Ducatis, all of them, and they have a special place in my heart, and this bike is no different. Even though I don't really want to ride around a 200 horsepower Panigale all the time, doesn't mean I don't love Ducatis, and this is a happy compromise for me. I get a bike I love from the brand I love at a price I can afford. So anyway, guys, that's gonna do it today for my review of my 2019 Ducati Desert Sled. I know I didn't get that in depth to it, and a lot of those things I'll have to think about later when I'm actually riding. So I will make some videos, obviously, riding the bike more moto vlog style. And I really appreciate you guys watching. If you're interested in buying one of these bikes or just wanna talk about it, leave me a comment below. I'll try to comment back to you anything I can answer about it. If you live in South Florida and you have one of these, you're one of like the five people that own one down here, let me know, maybe we can ride together. If you liked the video today, please like and subscribe to the channel. I'm really working on getting an awesome channel started here. And I think we're gonna do some really awesome things on the channel. So yeah, please like and subscribe. That's it for today, guys. Have a good one.